everybody. Welcome to the Light Gig. Uh, tonight is going to be a really cool night. We're uh, moving topics slightly, and it's one of Preston's favorite topics and mine as well. Uh, we want to welcome you all, and we are coming to you live from the beautiful city of New Orleans, Louisiana, at uh, the United Public Radio Network at 107.7 FM and the UFO Paranormal Radio Network at 105.3 FM. We're coming to you via Roku, Tumblr, uh, YouTube, Facebook, and many other platforms. We uh, are excited about this getting the show started, so I'm just going to hand it right back. Preston. <laughs> Thanks, Dolly. Yes, I'm your host, Preston Dennett. My lovely co-host is Dolly Safran. We've got a super exciting guest tonight. This is our episode number 20. So we're moving along right here on the light gate, and I'm so excited to see our chat here. I just want to say a quick hi to a few of you. Brian Morgan, thanks for joining us. Nancy Thames, awesome to see you. Dana Matthews, Maggie Smith, Louise. Hi, Louise. Awesome to see you. Scuba Maru, thanks for being here. Looks like we got quite a few people. Ah, W. Decker, thanks for the super chat. Super appreciate it. It's always very cool. Lunar Dove, lots of wonderful people here. Hi, Sandra. Awesome to see you here. Chris, Janice Connett, Ooh, Terry D, Ashley Taylor. This is going to be cool, you guys. We have a super awesome show. Uh, as you may be aware, if you followed my research, I absolutely love out-of-body experiences, astral projection. It's something I've been doing for a very long time. And so, of course, has Dolly. In fact, we've actually shared some amazing astral projections together. So <laughs> this is a subject that is absolutely dear to my heart. It completely changed my life. And our guest tonight is all about out-of-body experiences. In fact, she's one of the leading authors on this subject, for sure. She is changing the world. And I will just read her bio because it is amazing. Her name is Marilyn Hughes. She's been experiencing astral projection for decades and is also a author of over 100 books, 111, I think it was 109, on this subject and related subjects and teaches it. She, so let me just get into it. Marilyn Hughes has founded the Out of Body Travel Foundation in 2003, whose mission is to reduce spiritual hunger worldwide. She has experienced, researched, written, and taught about out of body travel and mysticism since 1987. It's exactly when I started having out of body experiences. <laughs> it's exactly when. And has spoken on dozens of radio and television programs to discuss her thousands of out of body experiences. She has studied the ancient sacred texts of all major and minor world religions, as well as Catholic, mystical, ascetical, biblical, doctrinal, dogmatic, systematic, liturgical, kata, I'm not going to show you, can pronounce that, kata, shithetical. I, I screwed that one up. I'm sorry, I tried. And moral theology. She studied individual schools of theology to include Franciscan, Carmelite, Ignatian, Dominican and Benedictine. She's also trained as a remote viewer in transdimensional controlled and associative remote viewing and is a hypnotherapist and has received certifications in a bunch of modalities. Too many to list really, but she's authored 109 books, 40 magazines, 18 CDs on out-of-body travel and comparative religious mysticism, including her seminal classic, The Mysteries of the Redemption a treatise on out-of-body travel and mysticism, which is, get this, in development to create a feature film TV series based on her experiences. I will be first in line to watch that. She was featured in the documentary film, The Road to Armageddon, a spiritual documentary and documentary film productions, The Grand Phases of the Soul, The Stairway from Earth to Heaven, How to Have an Out-of-Body Experience, The Tao of Mysticism, and many others. She is the author of an English language encyclopedia on ancient sacred texts, the voice of the prophets, wisdom of the ages in 12 vol volumes. Her out-of-body travel work has been featured in the Encyclopedia of the Unseen World. And, oh gosh, I mean, 
I'm gonna have to shorten this, Meryl. <laughs> we'll be here all day. I want to hear, hear you talk personally. <laughs> um, she, she's been the subject of several out of body travel research studies, including the out of body experience by Alex Sakaris of Skeptico. Marilyn Hughes and Dr. Rudy Child have co authored a chapter entitled The Science for Moral Law. She, of course, has been featured on Coast to Coast AM with George North, Midnight in the Desert with Art Bell. I did a show with Art Bell about out of body experiences way back in the day. The Joan Rivers show. I love Joan Rivers. God bless her. Uh, Marilyn Hughes was on the original board of the Dr. Edgar Mitchell Foundation for research into extraordinary experiences and is a continuing contributor. She came across her vocation unexpectedly when she was nine years old and had her first profound out-of-body experience when she saw the heavens open and a beautiful marble staircase surrounded by angels, which led to the throne of God. In this out-of-body experience, she was told many things, among them that he would return to her later in life and give her a mission to fulfill in relation to out-of-body travel. When she was 22 years old, she had her first out-of-body experience in adulthood and began a process of journaling, which would unleash thousands of out-of-body travel and mystical experiences over the next decades. And as a result of these words, the vision for the Out-of-Body Travel Foundation was born. And as Marilyn says, and I quote, our mission came from the words of Mother Teresa, the greatest disease in the West today is not TD or leprosy, it is being unwanted, unloved, and uncared for. We can cure physical diseases, diseases with medicine, but the only cure for loneliness, despair, and hopelessness is love. There are many in the world who are dying for a piece of bread, but the, there are many more dying for a little love. The poverty in the West is a different kind of poverty. It is not only a poverty of loneliness, but of also spirituality. There's a hunger for love as there is a hunger for God. Before her, I bring her on. I just want you guys to know that I have read a bunch of her books. Prelude to a Dream, book one of the Mysteries of the Redemption series and the whole series. Out of, do out of body travel. I mean, I've got a bunch of her books. She has had a huge <laughs> effect on my abilities to do this. So this is a true honest to God honor for me. That's, that's such a tall stack, it's gonna fall over. So let me just bring her on before I have a catastrophe with the, so many books. All right. My I got it. Hold on. There we go. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing, Marilyn? I'm good. How are you guys doing? We're good. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Really You're appreciate very it. very welcome. It's an honor to be here. And it's nice to it's nice to be back with Preston. We did an interview together about uh, about I'd say about twelve years ago. That's amazing. So this is a, a kind of a homecoming for us. <laughs> uh, there you go. That's awesome. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Preston, did he? Oh, so it looks like it's just us for the moment. <laughs> Yes, I'm frozen, so. Oh, are you? Can you hear me? <laughs> I can hear you, yes. Um, where's Dolly? Oh. There she is. There you, there you are, Dolly. Thank you. <laughs> Nothing like having it go weird on us right off no, the bat. No. <laughs> right, I'm back, at least for the moment. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Yeah, I'm a huge fan, Marilyn. Um, well, I'm honored. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's a, it's an honor to be here, and, and it's nice to meet you, Dolly. Thank you very and, much. Uh, I'm honored yeah. to meet you. Yes. <laughs> I think I read what's your one of your first books, Odysseys of Light. Yeah, those two, Odysseys of Light and Crystal River Flowing, were the first two. They were published in 91 and 92 by Hampton Roads Publishing. And then um, the other books were put out when I, you know, founded the Out-of-Body Travel Foundation in 2003. And so you, you must have been from the very beginning. <laughs> I've been following it for a long time. And like I said, I started experiencing this and looking for books on this that I, you know, had valid information. Of course, I love Robert Monroe. Oh, yeah. 
Mm -hmm. uh, William Buhlman and a couple of other guys. But then I found your books. I'm like, oh, gosh. And when I found out that you were just putting them out one after another, man, yeah. oh, man, I was in heaven, literally, literally. <laughs> <laughs> in heaven. I, mean, I was able to get really high up to the higher realms. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I mean, that was kind of like the goal and one of the hopes that I had in, in putting them out and creating that continuity. You know, one of the nice things that happened around the time of 2003 was on-demand publishing that made it possible for us to create some of that continuity, you know, get things out quicker and, um, and be able to show the the continuation of the journey more quickly to people. And, and I'm glad to hear that it did that for you. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, me too. I mean, the honors and is mine. So I would love to just start with how it all, I mean, I, I know we mentioned it slightly in your bio, but I'd love to hear about your, how you, this came about for you. Cause well, you, for me, you know, it started at, when I was a child, you know, I was nine years old. Um, I was always a, you know, very spiritual child, very interested in God and Jesus as a, as a child, very obsessed with, you know, these religious books that I could find around the house, trying to figure out things. But when I was nine years old, I had this mind blowing spiritual experience, this vision that just where the heavens opened, this marble staircase descended from heaven, the angels of God were on either side of this marble staircase and at the top of the staircase were um what i perceived as um father god and the lord jesus christ standing there and you know sitting sitting standing at different points in the experience and the clouds were just billowing you know thunderous billowing and there were different points during this experience but you know, I'm, I'm motion to come forward. You know, I'm just nine years old. So this is, um, you know, <laughs> quite, a, quite a moment. And, um, you know, so I'm just, um, I'm just blown away by the fact that this is, you know, this is a pivotal moment of realization. God is real. It's profound, profoundly present before me in, uh, you know, right before me. Um, there's this, uh, unbelievable beauty all around me. You know, these angels are majestic. Uh, this is, you know, the majestic beauty of it is impossible to really describe, but they're there, you know. Um, and then, so I'm being pulled forward and I have this vision within a vision where I'm being shown what's going to happen in my life and that there's going to be some difficulty um, in my childhood and in my lifetime where there's going to be trials and tribulations, um, but that I'm going to be called to do some things uh, later in my life. Uh, and it's not clear to me exactly how or in what manner, but that the cross is like thrown on the ground and I am shown that the cross is lit on fire and uh, somehow I am going to show the reality of God and that that is going to be my purpose in life. And somehow God is going to bring this back to me later in life and I will understand how this is going to be so. And then I'm brought back into this present day vision and, um, so now I'm back on the marble staircase and I'm called forth again. And, um, and then I'm, you know, shown that there will be tribulation. I'm kind of thrown on my knees, prepared for this majestic vision, experiencing this profound vibration, all these things kind of send, set back where I'm going back into um, into my body, but at the same time, this particular experience was different in that there was a consciousness to it that was a little more different than a lot of the out-of-body experiences I would have later in my life. And, um, <laughs> wow. and then, you know, I, I, I come back and I'm like, just, um, completely changed forever. 
I remember, you know, the, that next morning, you know, thinking, you know, I want to go tell my mom, my mom, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. my mother is this night, you know, I'm, uh, my mother's a German lady, you know, <laughs> and she's like, stop lying. You stop telling those lies. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and so, you know, I knew immediately because, you know, I, my, my, uh, my family of origin, you know, really had trouble dealing with how different I was. And that was going to be some of the, uh, the difficulties I would face would be the fact that, um, and like a lot of us face, right. That, uh, we aren't, going to uh, be surrounded by a lot of people who just understand or support the uh, the experiences that we have. And so I immediately understood my mother was not going to uh, understand what was happening to me. I, I never spoke about it with her again when I was growing up. And, you know, the experiences would sort of continue. But then the full out-of-body experiences returned later when I was 22. And so... It was like shortly, I was three months after the birth of my first child, I had my first out-of-body experience in my adult years. And then I start having the progression that you see that is laid out starting in the Mysteries of the Redemption, which starts this evolution that you're talking about that is written in sequence which shows how this purification journey begins in the soul and how the soul begins with these basic experiences that occur. Um, you start by uh, just going out of your body, experiencing what it's like to learn how to you know, use your spiritual body, learn how to use your eyes, ears, your senses and things like that. You start getting used to the astral realms and then you start moving to other spheres of existence. Um, but eventually you just start moving into different spheres of development. You go into higher spheres of development. Right. You start moving into uh, the time tunnel. You start experiencing past lives. Eventually you move into initiations into the mysteries, rites of passage. You go into higher spheres. You're meeting with spiritual guides you're meeting with guardian angels of all kinds. You're interacting with the Akashic records, learning about why you came this time so that you start uh, becoming more aware of what you need to focus on. You right. learn more about um, your special gifts, your, whether you're an artist, a writer, or a scientist, or you have administrative gifts or other types of gifts of your, your vocation. You learn a lot about your relationships and what you need to be um, dealing with, working on purifying character flaws, things like this. You, you begin that purification journey and that's what you start seeing unfold in your soul through these experiences. So it's a continuing upward evolution. Yep. I, have, I have a question for you. Um, what was it like the very first time that you did OBE? Uh, did you realize what was happening? I mean, what was what was the what was that day like? The first time as an adult, I actually, you know, the first time I thought like, oh, could I be dying? You know, because <laughs> yeah. you know, you're going out of your body, so you're like, well, gee, could I have just died in my sleep or something? You know, and so the first time you're a little bit afraid. I was a little bit afraid because. I wasn't trying to do it or anything. It just happened. And so I was a little bit afraid. I'm bouncing, you know, I started out, I'm going into this vibrational state. I hear these jet engine sounds. Um, and then I'm like raising my arm up and the light arm comes up instead of my physical arm. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, something different is going on. And then um, I roll over and I fall out of my body, bounce up to the ceiling and realize I'm out of my body and I'm like, oh, and I'm yeah. a little bit afraid that, oh, did I, did I, did, am I dying or something, you yeah. know? And, and so the first time I was a little bit more afraid, but then um, after it happened, I remember praying and asking that if this is something I should experience, that I asked for help, that the next time it would be more uh, peaceful. And the next time, I had three angels on each side that took me out and it was totally peaceful. And so, you know, by asking for the assistance, it was completely different. 
And I realized that, okay, this is something I'm supposed to experience and it's totally fine. But the first time, yeah, I was not quite sure what was going on. <laughs> well, it's a big shock. It really is. Mm -hmm. It was really, really, really small. Mm -hmm. And I just, I, I was standing there staring at myself thinking, what? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, and the next thing I know, I was flung out of the room. And uh, I was above the house. It was an apartment building yep. and, uh, over the ocean, you know, on Biscayne Bay. I was looking at the ocean and, and I was looking around and I thought, hmm, <laughs> <laughs> I was, this is not this is not what I expect to be happening to me right now. And I and, I, and at that age, I knew I dreamt. OK, but yeah. it was no dream. It was absolutely weird. Absolutely. Really, yeah. Because you can smell. You can feel, you touch, you can taste, your eyes are working. And when you look at your ethereal body, it's real to you. I mean, it's substantial when you see yourself like that, it, well, it, you know? It absolutely is. And then, you know, cause yeah, you do fly around, the, you fly around the neighborhood and then you can go into other areas. And one of the things that I pointed out is that a lot of it's, it's sometimes more real than what we experience here. Thank you. That's what I say. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. <laughs> you to describe to people. It's like the red is redder. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the colors, the colors, not only are the colors more, more real, but they're more vibrant. And there are other colors that okay. we don't have yeah. here. Exactly. You know, and then the colors are in a different spectrum. Yes. So, so when Absolutely. you started, I mean, for me, you know, that first time I did it, I thought I was dead, actually. Well, that was the mm -hmm. third time. First time I thought I'd stuck my finger in the light socket. <laughs> electrocuted. But I, my whole first year, Marilyn, it was maybe three to five second long OBEs. Because I, I would just get so excited. Right. Woo, right back in. Yes. So, so did yeah. you go through a process like that? Oh, or yeah. And I talk about that. I don't know if you remember and Come to Wisdom's Door about how it's very common when you get when, when you start out, you get very excited and that excitement will immediately sh throw you back into the body. Yep. You know, and so part of the process that we go through is to discipline ourselves so that we can like moderate that excitement so we can actually extend the experience. Exactly. You know? Right. It takes some time. You're exactly mm -hmm. right. It, it took me a little while too. I would, I would, um, my favorite thing to do was when I walked out, I would run outside you know, or just go outside. It felt like running to me, but I, I, I was still thinking I need to exit the house normally. I was yeah. going through everything, but I was following the back. And I would stand in the middle of the, or we had a big long road and I would look up and I could feel, I could feel this breeze that would wanted to uplift me. And I put my arms up and I would start to fly. Okay. I would just yeah. feel the breeze. And um, it was like tingles all over me when it was yes. happening. And I realized that I was lit up, you know, somehow I was shiny, you know, uh -huh. and I got so excited the first time it happened, I slammed into my bed, into me so hard, my bed shook and it, it, it freaked me out. I was like, oh no, how do I stay out? And it took me a little while to like stay on track with what I was thinking, you know, it's because it's your consciousness is having to guide itself back out of the body and, you know, our physical mind is not always in touch with our consciousness and the two have to cooperate. You know, the body can't become afraid or shook or emotional while it's experiencing simultaneously with your consciousness. And it, it took me a while to figure that out, you know, literally. Right. And, you know, I often call that like you're talking about the wind. I call it the mystical winds, Yeah. you know, that you feel yeah. the mystical winds picking up and you know yeah. that something is afoot, yep. you yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> And, Go ahead. Yeah, you know, as you're as you're progressing along the way too, in the beginning you feel it too, but as you're progressing along the way too, you'll see the mystical winds kicking up and you know something or even like a messenger might be coming yeah. because you feel the mystical winds or you yeah. see them kicking up. And oftentimes that's that's an indication that a messenger or a guardian or a spiritual guide or somebody something yep. is coming, coming that's yep. going to come that's going to come and inform you teach you guide you in some way and you're like 
<laughs> you know, yeah. you're like, okay, who's coming? Ready. You know, you know, you're you're right you know in the right 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 or do something yeah. that's important. Yep. You know, that you, you need to pay attention. Now in your body, do you still feel that in the body now? Because the longer I do this, the more that I'm pairing up with my physical self. Um, right. I can feel that coming. I know the wind, physically yes. know the wind in my head. I don't know how I know it. I just do. Exactly. exactly. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, and I'm getting goosebumps as we talk about that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I smell something. It, for me, it's always smell. I, I smell. Uh, I I smell people, places, and things. And then sometimes it's such a smell that it's heavenly. Okay. And exactly. It'll, it, it, it's amazing. I one I of the know. books I wrote was called Fragrance Mysticism, mm -hmm. and it it's about oh. that particular issue because you know how certain realms emit a certain fragrance yeah and how um these fragrances actually uh are part and parcel of how we bring ourselves to these higher spheres oh, on. that's right that's yeah right. and one of the things that i i would talk to people about in some of my live streams was part of the reason some of these uh, things that people do with uh, incense or essential oils. They're, they're trying uh, to make that happen. Yeah. Yeah. It's like they're what you're doing it. is you are creating the fragrance so that right. you can refine your meditation space so you can bypass to go to a particular sphere. Right. And it, it's an aid. It's an right. aid right. to help you to get to a certain higher essence yeah. a certain yes. higher yes. realm okay, that's related to the odor of sanctity that they talk about with the saints yes yes and it, you know that's very well said and you know it's it's so interesting because um i will experience that even just around my space um i will just randomly experience a scent Yep. And I will pay attention because when I experience this scent and there is no uh, uh, physical reason for that scent, I take that to be an indication that something is going on either in my uh, area or in my thinking that I need to pay attention to. So a message is coming in that I need to, I need to hear. That's right. I, and I, also, I also associate people that I love who have passed with mm -hmm. And I know them by their scent. Sure. And when they come to visit me, I smell them first. And I know they're there. That's and absolutely they're true. And I get emails from people. I got one just recently, um, you know, where the grandmother has her particular bath soap. Right. And the grandson <laughs> is smelling his grandmother's bath soap. And he's just wanting uh, validation that could she be communicating me with me yes. in this way? And of course, yes, she absolutely can scent and fragrance is a big part of um, the mystical realms. Right. Fragrance is a thing. Yes. <laughs> there were some of the saints who would have that. They'd be walking around smelling like roses and you're not yes. allowed to wear perfume under certain religions, right? Yes. Under certain disciplines, but they would still, it would be a sign. There was a bunch of mediums actually who would do that too. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and what you would also uh, experience is that uh, the souls of the damned are, uh, uh, you know, uh, spirits oh. from the infernal area, the infernal spirits would smell like putrid stench, you know? Please. And so, you know, we smell, we, we can smell like that which we actually are in the mystical spheres, just as um, we can appear, you know? so. One of the things, and ironically, Emmanuel Swedenborg, who is one of the great mm -hmm. mystics, would talk about this, how in this realm, we have the ability to mask what we are in the physical. Once we enter into the spiritual realm, we become that which we truly are. And so we no longer uh, have these masks. What we truly are becomes manifest. So right. we have this, we have the odor of sanctity. We have the odor of uh, non-sanctity. We, we appear um, in the manner of our vice or the manner of our virtue. Exactly. You see? I, 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 yeah, I, exactly. I've had um, 
comments in my lifetime about that. People have seen me out of, out, out of the body, you know, um, relatives say, you came to visit me and I couldn't hear you, but I saw you and it <laughs> what I look like. And it would shock me because it's, it, you have to think about what they're saying when they say it to you, you know, and, and I, I would go on the other side then and try to see myself, which is almost impossible to do. A couple of times I've caught a glimpse and I'm like, oh, OK, that's what I look like. Oh, wow. Um, I also know that I am incapable. I don't uh, you lose all. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? You lose all uh, when you say mask. A mask is a way for you not to have to say what's really true about you or what you're thinking or how you're feeling, whatever. And I've lost all those masks. They're gone. And a lot of people don't know how to take it sometimes when I'm talking because I'm very dead up honest. And I've noticed that people who are very, very evolved in this ability and are seeking knowledge in that also have that going on with them. It's it's part of the package, you know, you, you yes. go higher and higher and you lose all pretense, all of it, it's gone. And it's amazing, you know? Yes, that's true. That's I have so true. many questions, Marilyn, but one I want, I'm very interested in, because when I go out of body, all my hair comes back. <laughs> so oh, how nice, yes. So do, do you experience like, you know, a younger self when you go oh, out of yeah. body? Oh yeah, you know, we can experience a younger self. Sometimes I'm an older self, you know, I'm definitely skinnier <laughs> 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 like that, you know, but I definitely, you know, except when I'm in an older self, I'm actually, you know, more my size than I am now because I'm, you know, older now. Um, but I'll, I'll have an older self and my hair is all uh, silver, you know what I mean? Um, so I experience both. I'll be younger. I'll be older. I experience myself in different incarnations. So I've experienced myself like in Native American lives and I'll have the long black hair, you know, from those lifetimes. Um, so, you know, we, I, we definitely can experience different aspects of ourselves, you know. <laughs> well, those memories are amazing and you manifest the second it hits you, you manifest into it. That's true. Yes. When yeah. you do out of body stuff, and this is I've certainly noticed in the books, sooner or later at some point, the past lives are going to come roaring back at you. Yes. All, all that stuff that you haven't worked out. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, yes, we all have to, you know, but the neat thing about it is, um, and this is one thing I try to point out to everybody, is the neat thing about it is, is, is just the, the universality of the fact that, you know, how similar we all are. Right. And that the cool thing about it is that when we really get down to it, we really don't need to feel so badly about it <laughs> exactly. because, because yeah. we really are all kind of doing the same thing. Right. You know, uh, we, we put up so many obstacles to facing all our vices and all these things and we feel so bad about it. We're so worried about it. In the end, we're all, we're all doing the same thing. We're all, so similar. Uh, we all have the same vices, you know, I mean, variations on a theme, but really, um, and one of the things I, I tell people is, you know, having had the honor of receiving emails from people all these years, I realize even more how much we are the same. Right. And it's been really insightful to me how we are all so afraid of facing that inner darkness within us and then but in reality how interesting it is how how much it is the same and that i think that we would all benefit i think everyone would benefit if they had that um uh, if they could see the emails that i've received and realize that my goodness we are all doing the same thing and we're all so right. afraid of just basically realizing that you know gee we're you know we all fight lust we all fight greed we all fight avarice we all fight anger and you know and boy when we realize that we are all so similar it's not so scary to face those demons within ourselves because it's like we can look at each other and we can kind of like laugh and say <laughs> Ah, yeah, you do that too. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> you know? When I would go out of body, some of those things would come at me real hard. Yeah, me too. Anger, but I'd come out and I'd be so angry. Yeah. Or, or I'd create feasts of food and just stuff myself. Yeah. I got busted at some point. <laughs> I went through a year of that. <laughs> uh huh. Oh, my goodness. You know, I mean, I went through. Uh, 
I'd say probably a good, I'd say five, six years of just the demonic battles of going against all my vices. And, you know, we go through the gluttonies, the lusts, the greed. Um, and yeah, it's ugly to face our vices. But, you know, we're all here because we have the same ones. Yeah, exactly. People have asked me from time to time uh, in my life, they say, they're confused. They, they they say, well, when we die, we're out of chances. We don't have any more chances. I'm like, no, 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 no. No, that's not how <laughs> You get on the other side and you're going to be met with a whole bunch of things, like a debrief, you know, when you first get back. And you're going to have somebody with you. They're going to walk you through all kinds of things. They're going to be answering questions. They're going to help you with how you're feeling about it. I mean, there's a whole thing going on. You're not left alone because you're not alone at all. And uh, it's really hard to tell people that this isn't the only time you live. It goes on and on and on until you're ready to leave this particular realm that we're in now and never come back here and move on to the next phase of your existence. And they don't, they, it's hard for them to accept that because they've been taught not to think that way. And it, it, it's, uh, I wish that people, I like your books for that reason, because you're very frank about it. Okay. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. what needs to be said. You know, I can almost imagine your one gift is absolute writing. Okay. That's probably, <laughs> you know, I mean, you impress them. You're the writers. Okay. And, uh, oh my God. Because it's so important. People just, they're so locked in here in their minds and not looking out in what's really going on. And, Thank you for putting this all down on paper. It's pretty cool. You know? Well, thank you for saying that because sometimes, you know, it's good to hear because sometimes, <laughs> you know, we all, we all wonder, am, am, I, am I doing this? Is it a waste of time or is it really helping anybody? But, you know, it's, you know, when Preston, you talk about the, the gluttony and seeing it and how it's hard to look at. And, and I really want to talk about that because it is so hard when we are seeing our vices and we look at it and we're so overwhelmed by it. And, um, and one thing I want to talk about that too, is because one of the, one of the things that I really focus on in my work is how one, one of the things that was really hit, hit me, hit to me anyway. And, and I really touch on and, and go into in my writing and my out of body experiences is we are all here because we've been doing this like in a circle. You know, we, we keep reincarnating. We keep kind of doing the same thing over and over again. And what we want to kind of do is take notice of, oh, well, yeah, these vices are ugly. You know, we don't want to beat, beat ourselves up to a point where we we're so afraid to deal with them that we don't make progress because we have all this shame and, and stuff and, and guilt that doesn't progress. We want to kind of be able to look at them almost in the way that the Buddhists do, where we say, okay, well, this is a hindrance. Let it go. This is hindering me from going closer to God. Right. So how do I start taking this apart so that I can move closer to that all holy God because these vices keep me from him because we are incarnate here because of these things that hold us back. And what we want to try to do is realize that we do have that choice of saying, we can make a choice. We can decide, okay, well, I can decide that this incarnation can be that incarnation where I decide I'm going to take that purification journey and see if maybe this might be that that last lifetime where I'm going to climb that stairway from earth to heaven and start removing these fetters that are attached to my soul. And part of the way we do that is by realizing that we don't have to cower beneath those vices. Right. We don't have to be afraid of confronting them. They're ugly. They're scary when we get hit with them. And the demons, the demonic experiences, the spiritual warfare that comes at us in the out-of-body travel is intense. Yeah. It's 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 intense. <laughs> you know? Huge lesson when I was five years old. I had an actual demon chasing me around all the time. <laughs> and I mean, that, every night it came for me. And I'm kind of spunky anyway. And uh, I would 
go after it and chase it back. And uh, my grandmother could hear me in the other room. She could hear, she was psychic as well. And she finally said, what's going on? And I said, there's a bad guy, he's a demon, he's chasing me, he won't leave me alone. And he tells me things that I know are not true. And she said, okay, well, tell him no. Did it occur to you you could say no? And I was like, oh. And she said, here's what you do, the, you know. She says, get thee behind me and never come at me again. I Be gone, I banish you forever, you're gone. I let you go, bye. And I did that and it worked. And I, I mean, it worked right in that second, right in that minute, and it's never come back ever again because it knows I'll turn on it in a second and say, you're not allowed to be here, shuffle off, and I'm not afraid of it. And I think that's part of why we don't give up vice because we're afraid to, or we're afraid of the consequences that we have to face. And that's not okay for us to be thinking that way because the, we're the ones with a choice. It's our autonomy. We're the ones healing ourselves through this. You know, and I right. find that really interesting that we can do that. That's a thing. Yeah. Well, this is all right. about healing, the whole out of body experience, which is actually another one of my questions, Marilyn, sure. because I wrote an article about people who have been healed as a result of an out of body experience. Because I know that happened to Robert Monroe. Bruce Moan wrote a series of books. He healed himself of sarcoidosis. Albert Taylor cured him or improved his condition of multiple sclerosis. I once went to a healing temple. It was the most, it was so beautiful. I couldn't sustain it. I mean, it was oh my just. Oh gosh, I know. Those places are amazing. So I was, yeah, wondering if you could talk about the whole healing aspect of astral travel and projection and the out of body experience. I would love to. Um, one thing just to kind of put a, put a little cap on what we were just talking about. Um, we just put out a film called Spiritual Warfare, Angels and Demons, The Preparation. Mm -hmm. And we're about to film uh, the second one called The Combat. And those will give you a lot of uh, guidance on everything we were just talking about. So please feel well, free to stick with that a little bit because <laughs> <laughs> I've been exploring, you know, and it's funny. I, I talked to Dolly about this. You know, I'm, I'm reading about people exploring the lower realms. And yeah. So and that's kind of, you know, if I read it and, and I've always done this with the yearbook, <laughs> like, well, she did it. I'm curious. <laughs> Well, what happens, you know, what happens with some people, and it doesn't happen with everybody, but um, definitely what happened with me, and, and I hear from a lot of people where, you know, we, we get brought into out-of-body travel, and um, many of us are brought in, we see the beautiful things first, and then we're slowly brought in where we're then kind of initiated into the knowledge of the, the lower realms, and um, and so the way it kind of works is that if you understand it from the standpoint of okay when we are being educated and taught we're being taught by spiritual guides and guardian angels who are from realms above us right and so as we continue to be taught and educated and and assisted from realms above us we are then told well creation continues to create and we have to give back to creation all that creation gives to us. And therefore, then we are called into also serve those who are struggling in realms below us. Right. And so then I was myself began training to assist souls who are in purgatorial realms, which are realms where there is this purification between dark and light. Yes. And hellish realms, which is, you know, the evils and things like that. And so what happens is then as souls and angels and higher beings from realms way beyond where I am at evolutionarily are assisting me, I now, in order to give back to creation, must also serve those souls who are also um seeking to achieve higher uh, thrusts who are in other levels, either in, you know, different levels below where I might be at. Oh my gosh. And, that, <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we see, that's how we see the sacred who completes itself where we are all serving one another at all times. You, another see? Thing you, you see with people, cause I read all the books I can find on this. 
at some point, <laughs> you have repeated automatic experience, you're going to be taken to help bring people up to the other side. Exactly. And I read about that and I finally rescued this little girl who was earthbound. And it, oh my gosh, it just touched me so profoundly. And I realized I've actually been doing it and not really realizing it. Yes. <laughs> oh, but yeah, not too long ago, there was a guy who's stuck on this purgatory realm. He had just died of, I'm assuming, you know, the COVID thing that went through because it was crowded. <laughs> and he's, mm -hmm. it was a lower realm. I'm like, listen, I can take you to a higher realm. Grab my hand. And he's like, but you're a guy, <laughs> you know? I'm like, listen, <laughs> just grab my hand and we can go straight up and I'll take you to the higher realm. Trust me. So yeah, I think absolutely I agree with what you're saying. This is something that all out-of-body travelers at some point will do. It's right. part of the process and it's part right. of how we give back right. for what- and They know it too because in the house at night, they're here, okay? Yes. A whole new batches yes. all the time. And it's like, oh no, here we go again. Okay, I'm busy. And, <laughs> and that's here. also, you know, that's how we also, you know, when you're talking here about ghosts and lost souls. Right. And so that's where, you know, because I have these books on the spiritual warfare, yeah. um, the, the souls that are moving in the purgatorial and the hell realms. But then there's also the ghosts, the lost souls, the wandering right. spirits. And so those are also souls that we we also go in to assist. Right. And so these are also ways that we can be called right. in to be of assistance. Right. Um, and so these are all, all ways that we do this. And so you can see how um, we, you know, when, when you're talking about uh, seeing your own gluttony, seeing these own things, and I saw my own lusts, my own greeds, my own, I saw my own gluttonies too. <laughs> so I understand. You know, we go through these things where we go through the battle with the demonic and we get battled and battled and battled. And then after we go through that battle, then we start taking on that battle a little bit for others, a little bit. Yeah, you have to, yeah. You see, yes. for ghosts, for wandering spirits, which are souls that are in various other states that are not necessarily lost, but wandering and then there are you yeah. know ghosts that's a different you know but that's you know we that, but i have books on that so people can read it yeah and then we have the purgatories the hells and it, it can get complicated but that's what happens is that we then start assisting and so does that make sense yes yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So when you go out of body, do you guide each one with an intention? Is it, this is what I'm going to do, or are you taken to various places? Well, that's something that I think is real important for people to understand is that, at least in my experiences and what I hear from everybody, is that when we really embrace this experience, it's like the Holy Spirit comes within us and the Holy Spirit moves through us. You know, we don't we don't really know what to do. The Holy Spirit moves through us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so it's not like we're saying, oh, I think this soul needs this or that or this. It's like whoosh, it just happens through us. You know I what I mean? I have a question for you because this so now you got me interested in something. <laughs> <laughs> direction here. How uh you're psychic, correct? Well, I wouldn't call myself psychic. I have psychic abilities to a certain degree, but I wouldn't call myself psychic. Okay. You know, so I, I'm sensitive, I guess okay. is what I'd say. Okay. Um, I've noticed a, there's a there's a a corollary, a cor you know, mm -hmm. these abilities run side by side concurrently with some people. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, those who are very well developed psychically, even in body, take that ability with them to the other side. Right. And you you hear what people are thinking there as well as here because right. you're psychic on the other side. You don't even have to try; you just are. But the volume on it goes way up. That's true. On the yes. Side. <laughs> and, uh, sometimes I don't even have to be told anything; I hear it. You know. Yes. It's coming That's in on me, and I'll and, and it it I already embodied it. It's like okay. Yeah, know? it just comes through you. It's, you know, it's not. Yeah. yeah, you don't. Yeah, it's just there. It's exactly. pure knowing. It's like the the 
eternal mind himself exactly. is popping you with where to go next. Okay. Exactly. Well and, said. And uh, I, so I have that happening to me frequently, but I see it happening here too, to people who are unaware of what they're doing. And yeah. I, I watch them closely. I don't know if you've seen many people like that in this lifetime where they will just out of nowhere act without hesitation before anything happens, but they're already right there waiting for it to happen. They're like, they've already been instructed what to do and they immediately obey. And it is amazing to me to watch that happen. And uh, I wonder about that sometimes, you know, in these times, more and more people are becoming more aware of everything and understanding everything. You're helping I, that. I feel like those moments are when the spirit just takes a hold of people. Yeah. And it just moves through them. Right. Sometimes just, they're aware of it. Sometimes they're yeah. not. You know what I mean? Right. It's, I think it's that happens with us, thing. all of us yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's amazing to me. Okay. Yeah. The autobody, when I started having autobody experiences, I started having all of that. Came roaring up to clairvoyance, telepathy, precognition. Oh, my gosh. Precognition. Yeah, all those things start happening. And um, yeah, and you know, so I guess, um, uh, yeah, they do. And they all kind of are part and parcel of it. And I think um, my hesitation in just calling it psychic is because I feel like there's a label to that that is not exactly how it operates. You right. know, <laughs> no, I agree about that because it's actually it's human ability. Yeah, yeah. consciousness. You're, we come here, we indwell the bodies that we're in, and our physical mind is not our true mind. Our consciousness is who we really yeah. are. We're all one. You definitely, and, like the way it works yeah. for me yeah. is that the way and I the way I explain it to people too is that if God allows it to come to me. It will come to me, but it doesn't mm -hmm. automatically come to me just because someone asks it to. So it's like, well, if it does, I will share it with you. But if it doesn't, it doesn't. I don't, you know, I don't have, you know, I can't just say, okay, I'm going to do that for you. It's completely just as in the out of body travel state, it's going to be controlled by, an, you know, the Holy Spirit. In, in an experience like that, like for instance, like if, if um, for instance, like if a deceased relative is going to become present, that's not something I'm going to control. That's mm -hmm. going to be that's something cool. that's going to be a God experience. You know what I mean? It's not going to be something that I control, uh, but it does happen, I guess is the way I would put it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and also I think the psychic abilities aren't something you want to pursue so much, right? Like in, I think it's Tibetan Buddhism; they call them obstacles. They can actually retard your spiritual progress, but really, it's all about becoming more aware and spiritually enlightened and closer, going to the yes. higher realms. Yes, becoming yeah, a fully realized human that. being. Very we much. Unfortunately, so. have never gotten that message. <laughs> <laughs> My, my experience is a little bit more, um, um, I, uh, my abilities are superseding my physicality and uh, I am already half there, physically half there. And um, there comes a, a, a state of being when you realize that energy is mutable. And you know this from the saints, the saints have talked about this, okay? Your energy is mutable and you can reform it and do with it as you will. And I was taught uh, by entities on the other side that we are consciousness, pure consciousness, and we're autonomous. In other words, there is a Godhead and God does uh, speak to us and encourage us and show us and bring us through if we need help. But we're encouraged to seek for ourselves and to learn for ourselves. That's what I've been taught. And uh, I don't, I don't assign anybody any um, uh, yay or nay over me. I accept full, full responsibility for my will and what I do. And that responsibility also means making amends, healing myself, changing as I need to. Because eventually in my, what I've been taught is I eventually want to make it to God to have the conversation with them. And if I cast off all the things that are plaguing me and I go through it and I learn what I'm supposed to learn and I do as I should, 
still exercising my will upon it, my free will, I'll make that meeting happen. And that's what I've been taught in this lifetime. So it's a little bit different from what you teach, but it doesn't mean it negates you at all. It just means that's the road I'm on right now. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. So can we talk about healing now? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Terrell Wilson cured himself of a cold. <laughs> I know you, I think uh, I remember correctly, you smashed your finger <laughs> and healed it. I, do I remember that right? <laughs> your index finger or your thumb? Are you talking to me? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that was in one of your books. I might be misquoting. Um, I know you've had gosh, healing I'm not remembering that right offhand, but I, I'll, I'll tell you about the experience that comes to mind when you bring that up, which is a near-death yeah. experience that I had. Okay. In 2003. So how about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sounds amazing. Okay. So, you know, in uh, 2001, I was diagnosed with cardiomyopathy, heart failure. Wow. And, um, and I was, you know, uh, basically, you know, given like about six months and they thought about doing a heart transplant and all that and everything. And, and so in about 2003, my heart was doing really crappy. And, um, and so they decided they were going to do, um, what is that called? A heart catheterization. Right. And they were going to have a chopper standing by to uh, fly me out to the, um, the uh, university hospital in Denver where I'd already been typed out for transplant. And that was the plan. And um, uh, because it wasn't doing well and all that and everything. And so the night before the uh, procedure, something went wrong in the middle of the night. And um, I'm assuming it was some kind of, you know, arrhythmia or something, but I really don't know, you know, <laughs> and, um, and so I, um, I was just shot up into, you know, the, the tunnel with the light at the end and my cute little dog that I had when I was a yeah. child was there oh. <laughs> oh. And, um, sitting in the, in the little tunnel. And, um, you know, I went to the, <laughs> went to the end of the tunnel and I knew that at the end of the tunnel, I could see the, the ethereal uh, light there and I wanted so bad to touch it, but I knew that if you go further, right. you can't come back. So I was like, okay, what do I do, you know, and everything. So I'm just kind of there and, you know, the Lord Jesus sta is standing there and he says, he's wearing the robes of the sacred heart. So he's got the white and the red. He's really majestic looking. And he says, he's going to take me on, a journey and he's going to give me a little bit of a dispensation and take me on a journey into beyond the worlds of the light and let me see some of these worlds beyond the light that normally you can't go to and not come back from. And so he takes me into all these beautiful worlds and they're just amazing. And I won't even try to describe them because they're just amazing. <laughs> and, um, and it was just a beautiful, beautiful journey I saw all these spheres of light. It was just awesome and wonderful. And so I come back and he brings me back to right before the tunnel of light. And right before the tunnel of light, there's this, this measure. And this measure is this measure of this uh, thing that tells you uh, how you're doing on the measure of self selfishness to selflessness. Oh, wow. And he's telling me that, you know, the goal of human existence is to go from selfishness to selflessness. Okay. Yep. And he shows me that he's that on the, on the measure I'm up there near the top and it's, I've done well. And he's like, okay, so you can go if you want, you've, you've <laughs> accomplished what you need to do. So you can go if you want, or you can head back. So it's, up, it's kind of up to you. And then he shows me someone else in my life who's kind of down near the bottom that, and he's, and it's like, okay. And then he, and I hear the world, I'm looking at the world in the distance and I hear like the shouts and the screaming of the world. And he's like, you can go back and the people are all going to be the same. They're all going to be selfish and they're all going to scream and wail and do all the usual selfish things they do. So it's not going to make that much difference if you go back. 
but you can go back if you want. <laughs> so he's letting me know that, you know, I can do either. And so then we kind of move over and I'm standing directly in front of him and I'm like, okay. And you know, I mean, I mean, I don't want to go back. It's <laughs> I just flown through all these amazing yeah. worlds, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, I mean, come on, you know, but I've got these three little kids at home, you know, and, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, my kids are really young. My youngest was two. And I was like, well, if, as long as that's still my choice, I've got to go back because my kids are really young. Right. And he's like, okay, so you can do that. And he's like, so if you want to go back, you've got to go back. And I want you to go back. I want you to pray for a heart transplant. And I said to him, okay, well. I can't do that. And he kind of just looks at me and he's like, <laughs> and, I'm like <laughs> and I'm like, but I will pray that the perfectly healthy person who would have to die for no reason to provide me with a heart will survive and not die will survive. And, um, and I'll take my chances with the heart I've got. And he looks at me and he says, I grant that. And um, and he takes my hand, and we go shooting back, and we're heading back, and we go like we're midway from heaven to earth, and we enter into this like it's like a you know like a cafe bookstore, you know those kinds of places that yep. we used to have more of back then, yep. Yep. and we're sitting like at a little table in a cafe bookstore, and. It's kind of funny, you know, sitting with the sacred heart of Jesus, you know, hanging out in a cafe bookstore. <laughs> and he's and he has me look up at this bookshelf and there's this bookshelf with all these books. And he's like, look up there. And he's and he's and all of a sudden he's, I see all these books and they all have my name on them. And I see, you know, the Mystic Knowledge series, you know, and he's like, there's all these books. And he's like, I'm going to make good use of you in the time you have left. <laughs> and I'm looking up at those and I'm like, <laughs> I'm looking at it, I'm like, what, what? <laughs> I'm kind of like overwhelmed because I'm like, oh, job. oh yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, there's like a lot of books because, you know, literally at that point in time, I've written three books, you know, <laughs> wow. and there's about a hundred books there. And he yeah. says, yeah. He's, and, and so I'm like, you know, I'm like, it's going on in my head. I'm like, are, are, is he saying I'm going to write all that? I don't understand. How's that possible? You know, that's what's going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, and so then all of a sudden, whoosh, and all of a sudden I'm, I'm back in my body. It's time to get up. We have to go to the procedure at the hospital. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just kind of like blown away because I'm like, that was like, man, that was awesome. <laughs> it's like, you wow. know, so I get to the hospital, go through the procedure Chopper's standing by and I wake up and I'm still in the hospital in the place when I'm not in, not in Denver, wake up. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, and I asked the cardiologist, I'm like, what's going on? You know, uh, I'm supposed to be in Denver. And he's like, you know, Marilyn, we don't really understand what's going on, but you know, for some reason, your heart just significantly improved from last week to this week. And we just sent the chopper back because we really don't need to send you up there now. And we don't really understand why. So the like, virus that caused the cardiomyopathy disappeared, didn't it? Well, it, there's a virus that causes, I'm a registered nurse. There's a virus that causes cardiomyopathy and, well, and it's the pericardium that surrounds your heart and it gets thicker and thicker and it fills with fluid and it actually puts your heart in the congestive heart failure. It squeezes it to death. So what happened is he probably took that virus from you and healed you instantly. Well, and mine was peripartum cardiomyopathy. What? And mine was peripartum cardiomyopathy. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's the pericardium. And it, it's a virus. It causes your an infection in the lining of your pericardium. And it swells and swells and swells. And it it literally squeezes your heart to death. It makes it impossible for your heart to beat. And right. the reason they have to give you a transplant is they have to take the entire thing out. Your heart is now damaged by it to the point of no return. So you got a new, you got no virus anymore. 
your pericardium is unswollen itself, your heart's relieved, and for some reason your heart muscle was not damaged. That's a miracle. Right. And um, in my case, it was related to childbirth, which is peripartum. But, um, the, um, but you know, yeah, same thing. Exactly yeah. what you explained. But, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so basically, yeah, I mean, I knew, I knew that he had done something. <laughs> you know, okay. and, um, that's and, amazing. Um, okay, yeah. well, you know what? We have to take a quick station identification break. So, if you could hold sure. on just a second, I want to let everyone know that you're watching The Light Gate. I'm your host, Preston Dennett. My lovely co host is Dolly Saffron, right over there. And we're talking with Marilyn Hughes, <laughs> amazing author and teacher about astral projection. We are streaming live on United Public Radio Network 107.7 from the beautiful city of New Orleans. Also, the UFO Paranormal Radio Network at 105.3. We're on Roku and several other platforms, Facebook and YouTube. And yeah, uh, this is so awesome, Marilyn. I'm learning so much. It's a real honest to God treat to hear about how healing this experience is and you know, having experienced a lot of the stuff myself, I, I'm anyone I talk to, I'm like, you have to try this. <laughs> so I, I want to, you know, the whole, we're going so quickly here. We're already an hour <laughs> in. I want to make sure you, that we give people a chance to learn how to do it. So if you could yeah. give some pointers to people sure. on what you can yeah, do. One thing, um, one thing to let people know, um, the website, outbodytravel.org. And one thing, um, since Dolly is a nurse, I thought I'd just throw out just a couple more things that would help because um, Dolly understands this. So later, um, you know, my heart was extremely enlarged. It was thinned out. Um, I had a high, a high ejection fraction. And oh, yeah. all of those things went back to normal, which yeah. is physically impossible. That's unheard of. That's right. It's unheard of. I've never, in my entire time as a nurse, I've never, ever heard of a situation like that. That's amazing to me. That's just yeah, and they oh, actually wow. had, they actually yeah. later on had, um, they actually had some doctors, ironically Catholic doctors, take a look at it because they were looking at it yeah. for a miracle. Yeah, um, and the doctors said that's not possible, but you know, uh, yeah, but yeah, they didn't know what to think. Yeah, except that it's yeah, this is this is God intervention. But you know, <laughs> I understand it. You you amaze me. You're about as emotional as I am when I start thinking about what happened to me at the age of. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, uh, I came down with infectious mononucleosis at the age of almost six, and it was killing me, literally killing me. There was no stopping it. It was just a matter of time. And our doctor had come out to where we lived to be with me because I needed pain meds. I was in agony. When he got there, um, I just looked at him and said, I'm so tired. I just, mm -hmm. I'm just so tired. I'm done, you know, and uh, I left. I saw, I rose up out of my body. I saw up in the top of the room, I saw everything that was going on. And then like, poof, I was somewhere else, okay? Literally somewhere else. And I could see people off to my right who were like waiting for me. And somebody walked up behind me and said, uh, I need to talk to you. And he didn't turn me around, but he put his hand on my shoulder. And, and, he, and he said, you're not going to stay here. And at that moment, I sort of got upset because this was way better than how I felt when I got before I got there. I mean, I knew I was no more pain. I was hale, healthy. Oh, I did not want to leave because what I saw in front of me was unbelievable, unbelievable place I was at. And um, he said, I need to talk to you for five minutes. You're going to listen to me. I'm like, OK, this was the voice of authority. OK. And he said, you have, and when you said you have things to do and he showed you the books, <laughs> I freaked out because uh, he showed me every animal that was there. He said, these are animals and that you, in your lifetime, you will have something to do with animals. They will come to you. You will help heal them. You, any animal that comes to you, you help. That's your job. You advocate for them. You advocate for them. This is what I want you to do. And uh, I was like, okay. And he said, you have the ability to heal. Use it. I'm like, okay. And the next thing I knew, he, he put both hands on both shoulders and kind of, you know, gave me a squeeze and poof, I was slamming back into my body. Now, what killed me is my spleen ruptured. Okay. It just totally went poof. And 
when I came back to myself, I wasn't in the house. They had gotten me to the hospital by then. They said I coded for almost eight straight minutes. Um, when they went in to see what they could do, either remove my spleen, you can't really repair a spleen. It's, you know, this is one of those things that if it fractures, it's gone. And uh, it had already started repairing itself. I, when you x-ray or do an MRI, you can see the scars where the spleen had ruptured and repaired itself. And they have no explanation. That is an unbona fide miracle. They called it unprecedented. There was no reason I should be dead, dead, dead. Okay. This kills almost six years old. And uh, I cried for years. I'm a little bit more stable, but watching you start to, to I, I know that feeling. I know it. It's incredible. It's like <sighs> the literature on near death experiences you know, is amazing. amazing. We had a friend, a yeah. family friend who was dying of cancer. She had a near death experience, came back, it was gone. Right. They called it the miracle of the hospital. Right. Yeah. And it's, and it, it's profound. It, it left me understanding two things about life here and life as we move on. And that it, it is, it is um, under somebody else's control besides ours. Okay. And that the mind of God is everywhere in everything. It is, we are in God. Okay. And that how we choose to move forward. And you were, you just made my point a minute ago, by the way, you were given a choice and you chose. <laughs> it's up to us. We choose our paths. That's our autonomy. That's we're, we're given that freedom to do that. And it is about selflessness. It is about helping. It is about being more than you are and stepping away from yourself and realizing this is just a temporary place for us to get that message and then move on with it, you know? And, some of us are lucky enough to have had these explosive situations in our lives where it's driven home to us, you know? Yeah. I mean, I consider it a blessing, a miracle, grace, all of that, that that happened to me. You know, I wouldn't trade it back in. I, I wouldn't do it any other way because it altered me. It altered my path of understanding. And that was a miracle to me, you know? That was so a good not, lesson there. Every tragedy has its silver lining. Yes. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Well, and talking about how to, just to let people know, if you go to the website at outofbodytravel.org, there's a link there to go to the YouTube channel. And we have um, we have some films, you know, so we have how to have an out-of-body experience where it goes into a lot of detail. And there's the follow-up, the Tao of mysticism goes into getting into deeper mysticism. And then uh, a bunch of other films too, like the grand phases of the soul is really helpful as well in um, laying out the purification pathway, which is really helpful as well. But also, Preston, you had shown that book, Come to Wisdom's Door, yeah. which is how to have an out-of-body experience, which is a really good, helpful starter, you know, it just giving you the basics of how to get started. And for everyone, um, you can go to outofbodytravel.org. There's a link to um, our, our download site, which is outofbodytravel.wordpress.com, and you can download the books for free. So you can download our books. I have a whole series. I think it's nine books or ten now on out of, uh, how to have out-of-body experiences, and they go in sequence, starting with uh, uh, Come to Wisdom's Door, and then it goes into um, out-of-body travel uh, out-of-body experiences, and then there's uh, out-of-body travel and mysticism, and then we have the hammer of mysticism, which is an encyclopedia of out-of-body travel terms, and then uh, goes into all the dip deeper mysteries of how to have out-of-body experiences, and we have films on a bunch of these books as well at the YouTube channel, and so you can check those out as well, um, but I'd be happy to lay out some basic ideas you know a lot of what out-of-body travel starts with is the basics of what spiritual practice is which is silence prayer and meditation you know <laughs> yeah, right. um, and the one thing i always add to that is um i always recommend three hour periods of meditation because in the beginning you want to be doing this meditation period that lasts for this lengthy period um, because you need to have a long enough period of time where you can enter into uh, the vibrational state 
Right. If you don't do it long enough, it's hard to get, uh, get into the vibrational state, mm-hmm. especially in the beginning. Yep. You know, as you as you start doing it more and more, it comes upon much quicker and more naturally. But in the beginning, you're 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 uh, needing more time. But come to wisdom's door goes into all the things, the blocks and the and the fears that people have, the things that block them from it. One of the things about the Mysteries of the Redemption series that is helpful to people is that it kind of um, helps open people up to the experience and helps them to, uh, uh, it kind of, it, it's, it's, it's like an energetic thing, a frequential thing, a vibrational thing. So people will have spontaneous experiences while reading it it just right. starts happening for right. them right. so yes. yeah reading the mysteries of the redemption i hear from a lot of people where it just starts happening naturally as they read those books and so starting right. with come to wisdom's door and the mysteries of the redemption is where it often all begins you know for a lot of people if ever i start lagging in my out about experiences i'll just pick up some books and i'll read them like, yeah yeah, found you back into it. Yeah, I know. We <laughs> in a world today. It's it's almost like there's a huge fight between light and dark on this planet now. Yeah. And uh, the the dark doesn't want you to be able to do any of this. It wants to stop you from it and block you off from it. And uh, meditation. I've when I talk to people about meditating, you're meditating into the light. You have to be in the light when you meditate. It get you can't be in the dark. You have to be in the light. That's the first thing because dark can't touch you in the light at all. And uh, so I say, do it during the day. You know, be in a pretty bright room, make it silent in the room. Don't let anything distract you, but stay in the light, you know, and see the light. Learn to see the light because the light's there for you to get to it. You just have to see it or be in it. And the more you practice, the better you are at it. So if you are at night saying, I want to go for a walk out, you can in the dark because you you are light. You 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 spread that light out. That's what meditation is for: is to teach you that process. Because the the period where you're in that energetic period, that's your light ascending. It's evolving out of you, and it's giving you a way to go out. And that's the door, and that you leave your body from that. And yeah. it's amazing to me. So that's true. You know, prayer is talking to God. Meditation is listening. Right. And, you know, receiving the answers, but meditation is also energizing the energization process and the, right. you know, where the vibrations enter, right. you know, and so that's also important. I also wanted to acknowledge that that was funny <laughs> about the cats and the dogs. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? I, have, I am reading these comments. So the people yeah. who are posting the comments don't think I'm ignoring you. I know. <laughs> <All right. laughs> if you ask me, do we do we we do are there animals on the other side? And I'm like, yes, absolutely. Yes. They go with yes. us. They're waiting, yes. you know, they're there. It's amazing. Yes, they are. And yeah, I've, I've seen all my deceased pets all together on the golden road in the city of the New Jerusalem. And it was really cool. And, you know, yeah, I, I mean, even my little rodents, you know, I've had hamsters. Yeah. Yeah. They're all there. <laughs> Anything you take care of. I know I'm one, I've taken care of so many animals in my lifetime. Our family owned a zoo and, you know, so I was zookeeping and stuff like that. And I've always, I've always just, heck the two, the animals we have in the house right now are came here looking for us. You know, the, Somebody said, show up. Here we are. <laughs> and so they're ours now. You know, you can't help yourself. Mm-hmm. And uh, yep. I know they're all there. I mean, they're all part of it. And uh, yeah, I've got a couple of uh, real near deaths, not completely fully, you know, but, you know, right there. And I have mm-hmm. one animal that is with me all the time. She's never leaving me. Uh, I had a service dog and I um, was poisoned when I was younger. And uh, I got very, 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 very sick. And I had to have her. And, uh, I had her for a long time. She saved my life more than I can tell you. And she's still there because I'll get real close or I'll op- start to OB and I'll look down and there she is. She's right there just wagging her tail, looking at me like, oh, okay, we're going. <laughs> you know, she she was with me at the zoo. You know, she's just one of those animals. So 
Yeah. yeah, they're all there and you know them and they know you, you know? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. <laughs> it's amazing to me. Okay, so here's another thing that I'm interested in that, that you, you've done. Um, when you say that you went to other worlds and mm -hmm. you saw the other worlds, were there other types of people on them or was this all spiritual worlds? Um, well, I mean, there's like other there's other beings from other planets. Right. So there's extraterrestrials in them. You know, one of the things that I, I thought was interesting when I went to one of the heavenly realms, one of the heavens. Yes. Um, I remember being surprised when I came back yeah. that I was like, oh, there were extraterrestrials in heaven. And it was so, <laughs> natural. It was so natural when I was there that I didn't even notice it. Didn't you even know? think about it. No, no. Preston yeah. said, asked me once, he said, I want to see an ET on the other side of gray. And I said, well, all you have to do is just look, you know. And yeah, there's there's extraterrestrial. I've seen a lot of different yeah. types and of he, yeah, We manifest as we are, right? We're all souls. Yes. And, yes. uh, and there's, there's other kinds of, it's not just uh, people, if that's what you're asking. I mean, there's there's all kinds of angelic beings. There's golden right. angels. Yeah. There's all kinds of celestial hierarchies. There's higher beings. Yeah. Lots of, if you go in the lower yeah. realms, there's all kinds of different demons. Uh, yeah. in your lower beings, but there's also in the higher realms, there's spiritual guides, there's spiritual teachers, there's um, there's different types of celestial beings, you know, um, yeah. there's different types of, there's elementals, there's uh, tachyon beings, yeah. beings that are beyond, um, oh, beyond right. they're beyond uh, personification, I guess you'd say, I they're not... Um, you know, and then there's, uh, there's, I mean, there's, there's life forms that are not uh, like us. They're beyond. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I've been having some really amazing, yeah. amazing know. experiences that I can't even put into words. I've been, yeah. you know, I, I tell my friends, I'm like, I had um, amazing experiences last night, but don't ask me to put them into words. I have none. <laughs> I, I don't even know. I'm trying. To, I mean, I had stuff last night where I'm like, yeah. I'm still trying to figure out if there's any way to put them into words. You know, I know. I've seen. I've seen. Um, what I I guess you would consider angels. I consider a little bit differently when I see them. I I see them differently. I don't know. Uh, they're dimensional beings. Being well, there's both the angels world. and dimensional beings. Yeah. So there's both they're light beings, and they look just like angels. I mean, they look just like them. And it freaked me out the first time I saw one. I was like, are you real? You know, all illusion go away because I was OBE at the time. I went, I was like trying to, no illusion, no illusion, all illusion go away. And I sat there just very quietly shut up and was, <laughs> okay? and I'm like, for it to stay, it's talking to me. And it finally said, you know, you are a beautiful, beautiful being and I love you. And I couldn't help myself. And I said, I love you too. And uh, I held my hand out. I wanted it to touch me, okay? And it did. It it brushed my palm, and it was like, and then I find out that these beings exist dimensionally. And I've been to, I've been physically to places that a lot of people don't get to go to. And uh, I saw one in it that way. And it just I swear to God, I think it was the same one, you know, the same being. And I, that can happen sometimes. I've had weird uh, moments where I was pre, you know, pre, or, you know, pre prepared to face something that I was going to go look at, and right. there it was, you know. And that's exactly what happened with this being. It was just there, and uh, that blew my mind. And there are just so many things, you know. Right. Your yeah. Extensive experiences blew me out the water as I was reading through your books. I mean, you've had incredible, incredible experiences. When you were uh, remembering your past lives and stuff like that, how 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 does that work for you? I mean, what's your process for that? Well, in the beginning, I would uh, have uh, a lot of we would go through the, the tunnel. It's almost like the tunnel of time, and mm -hmm. be dropped into these bodies and it, and just really just experience it very physically again, you know. Um, and, you know, it's interesting because I've experienced many more lifetimes that I haven't even written about, you know, <laughs> it's like, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, I might as well just write novels about these lifetimes, you know, <laughs> do some mini series on these different lives. But, um, you know, it, it's, 
and you drop into them and it's like you are phys you are physically there um it's very uh very physical and very profoundly real and you're just you're walking and a lot of times you have like an over self like a soul self ex experiencing it above while you're also experiencing it below yeah, it's, it's like you meld back in you're real yeah my experience is almost just like that I'll, like you know when we have a memory i can remember i have an eidetic memory so mine's pretty sharp and i remember everything okay mm -hmm. It's so powerful that memory that I re-experience the sounds, the smells, the taste, right. mm -hmm. the voices of the people, the air moving, the trees, all of it. I see little things moving around in the right. landscapes, everything, all of it. And it's like physically actually being there, only I'm sitting here recalling it. Okay. Right. And it's like I'm transported back to it and I'm reliving it in the body in here. Right. And what's important, wow. what's yeah. important about those past lives is that you get taken back and you're taken to moments in time that are going to have some kind of significance for you to remember right. Right. your Important. present. Right. You know? How did you respond? A lot of times it's going to be a moment of death. It's going to be something that has um, some significance for a, per you know, a particular relationship in your present moment yeah. of day, or it's going to be a pattern of behavior uh, something to do with your life purpose. Right. Um, a lot of times you're going to re-experience a series of lifetimes with a particular soul yeah. uh, so that you start understanding the the uh, relationship that you have and what you've been doing over and over again so you yeah. can kind of understand that. Um, and one of the things that's really important when you start remembering past lives is to focus on those um, those particulars, sometimes people get caught up in erroneous details and they don't focus on what is the, um, the essential element really, right. Of what is the purpose of being taken back? What, what, what do I need to know? Yeah. yeah. What is it that I had a real profound moment that way? I mean, like what's the most, what's the most profound moment you've ever had with that? with past lives, yeah. there are so many, but I mean, the the real, I mean, I'd have to say what's the most profound understanding of the whole yeah. is, gosh, gosh, what's the most profound? I mean, I, I mean, it's just like right now, I'm thinking of, you know, dying by fire in Turkey. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was being burned alive. Um, I I mean, yeah, been there. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's you know it's just these random moments come to mind yeah. um you know and, and i think of like this other moment where for some reason right now i'm thinking of us being burned alive in a in a barn another time um you know yeah. it, i i would think that a lot of these a lot of these moments i'll say that the the thing that is the most important uh that has been shown to me is don't die before you tell people you love them. Right. Exactly. Because all these moments are, you know, you're dying and you don't realize you were going to die suddenly and you've forgot, you haven't told people you yeah, love them. Something undone like that. That's the most important thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. I would say that's really, you know, don't leave, don't leave you know, words unspoken. Right. right. Uh, love unspoken. Don't do that, you know. Remember, you can die when you least expect it. <laughs> Forgive everybody. Yeah, forgiveness and love. Those are really important. Future what life? Huh? I'm sorry, what? Have you, have you ever been taken to a future life? Yes, uh, oh quite a, a few. Yeah, but yeah, I've been taken to future lives on different planets. You know, definitely. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. I have not done that yet. <laughs> Or if I have, I'm I'm not aware of it yet. Um, the I'm being prepped for something, and it's it's like okay, fine, you know. My most profound moment on this planet at this time in this life was it was brought to me that how we react to things is paramount. Our reactions guide us into the, either being negative or positive, or losing love, or going into and going into judgment, or gaining love and going into forgiveness, and 
it's uh, really important that you almost have to talk yourself through it sometimes. It's like, why am I reacting like this? I need to stop. I need to be quiet. Somebody's going to tell me something. I know it. And I just need to shut up. And uh, it's our nature to go in an opposite direction from that. It's one of the habits of our physicality here. And uh, it got put, it zonked me with it almost like a hammer on the head. You have to learn this. You have no choice. You will learn that in this lifetime. It's like, okay, I'm working it. <laughs> well, and this, along yeah. those lines too, one thing that comes to mind is, you know, along those lines and what you were talking about earlier about different beings that you come across and, and extraterrestrials in the other realms. Yeah. You know, literally I've run into a lot of different extraterrestrials in the out of body travel state. So like Pleiadians, Arcturians, Greys, um, Alpha Centaurians, um, many different types, the ones I call the Tibetans who are hard to explain, but one in particular I'd like to bring up along the lines of what you're talking about is this race of aliens. And I don't even like calling them aliens because that's a bad word for them, but they're extraterrestrials. They come from, I guess I would say they, these are this, this race of beings that would be extraterrestrial to us, but they come from this world so far evolved beyond us. You know, they come from this world that is so far um, in, be, evolved into love and light. And they came to me and I got to see their world and it's so resplendent, resplendent in light. I could see it from a distance. Right. And this being came to me, he came and he's just light. Um, and he was male. -ish. He's alive. But he's not corporeal. He's a fifth dimensional entity. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yep. Yeah, but he's um, he came to me and he allowed me to experience because I was not um, evolved enough to like visit his planet right. in my spirit. But he allowed me to touch and blend into his essence. And by doing so, I could experience their world for just a moment, yep. for, for a few moments. And um, and so but I like, touched his hands and closed my eyes and kind of it was like a blending of some kind. Mm -hmm. And it was like for for, you know, for what seemed like a very long time, what seemed like maybe an hour, but it was That's probably a few minutes. Yeah. I was there. I was in his world. And um it was so, I would say like millennia, 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 millennia beyond what we know, what our world is in evolution, in love and light. Right. And it was so beautiful and so wonderful and so ecstatic, you know, and what we know as like, like, um, I don't know, Preston, like if you've experienced like the samadhi, the ecstasy in the, in the out-of-body estate. So yeah. like imagine that like a million times over by millions. about 10,000. Millions, yeah. A million yeah. times over by about 10,000. And imagine you live in a world that exists that way as their normal state. Way. Yes. And right. so I was there. And I got to be there for maybe about like an hour, whatever, in some kind of timeless sort of way. And then at some point I was pulled back and I was like begging him, please let me stay <laughs> in your world. Please let me live in your world. And of yeah. course I couldn't go there. I'm not, you know, I'm not qualified, you know. <laughs> and, um, yeah. I want to be qualified. Just, yeah. It was an honor to be allowed to just experience it. I and, thought, um, when did this happen? Um, that would have probably been maybe 10 years ago. And it was just so wondrous. And it was, it was a one-time thing. And it was, you know, I've had these experiences throughout the years where I'll meet like these extraterrestrials that I've never heard anyone else mention or whatever. And I don't get to see them again, like the Tibetans, like right. this particular race. And I, they didn't tell me their name or whatever but I'll never forget them. Well, I and believe you. I, you know why? Because I am intimately involved with the beings that you described, the fifth 
they are fifth dimensional non corporeal beings. Uh, they're not fifth dimensional. They're mystic. well beyond that. They are so. Well, they're not, they're not, they're not, their evolutionary they're, is different, but they're that's why they're able to be in the fifth dimension. It is uh, they're non corporeal. They are billions of years in advance of us, and uh, I fly with him. Uh, I fly with uh, tall gray ETs. I'm an experiencer. And um, one of the beings that indwells the craft that they built in the fifth dimension that I have absolute knowledge of and understanding and know how to fly it, I go in with him. We meld together just exactly like you because all of their technology is pure light, all of it. Right. And I am, I work with him. He's not a gray. But no, they're not gray. He, right. he is a non corporeal fifth dimensional being. Right. He is so knowledgeable. It is unbelievable. He can do anything right. at any time. And his world is as you describe, literally right. as you describe. I can't even live there. I can't go there. Uh, they right. brought me through once. Uh, it was a quick jump through and then out. And it made me ill to be there for too long. I mean, I was, got ill, physically ill. It affected me like that. Um, but they exist. And you're describing them perfectly. That's how they communicate. They are right. one with you. They, they're one together, all of them. They are in communication in ways you can't even imagine. And they they create the craft that all the, throughout the universe, God's universe, God's creation, that they travel to this world from other worlds and they come and visit us. And they are in that craft. They, they indwell it. They build them there. It's all light technology and they're alive. I don't know how to explain that. The craft are actually alive. That they indwell like we would indwell our body, they indwell that craft. And, right. and it's amazing. It's really amazing. You're the first person ever in my life <laughs> to describe this being ever. <laughs> really good detail. I mean, you're shocking me, okay? Because that's amazing. Preston knows very, very well who this person is. I call him Talata. I can't pronounce his pr proper name. It's uh, no, <laughs> it's my nickname in Talata. And uh, he is, I've known him my entire life, my entire life. And he wow. comes and he goes. And uh, yep, that's my, that's one of the things that I was going to do in this lifetime to bring a message forth to everybody, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, they are very spiritual. They, they, they know that God is God. They call God the all mind, you know, because he's all creation. He's everything, you know, mm -hmm. he, he ellipses all of it. It's we're in him actually. And uh, they're that they're that evolved, and that's amazing. Did he come and get you, or did you just run into him OBE? He came and got me. Okay, that sounds like a, cool. yeah. well, we got a bunch of questions in chat, and we've only got like 15, 20 minutes left. So I'm hoping we can get through some of these. And I'm going to start with this first one from Bim Jim. It says, "Can you do telepathy? What percent of humans can do telepathy?" Well, um, I don't consider myself someone who like does a lot of telepathy, and we can hand that one to Dolly probably. Oh, the, the percentage, everybody has the ability to do telepathy, even you. You're born mm -hmm. with the ability. You have the hardware in your head to do it. But we're living on a planet where everybody's messing everything up and causing hate and fear, and, you know, it's hard for you to develop the abilities. People have also been put down for it. They, you've been made to feel bad, wrong, and, you know, shunned away from it. Uh, the percentage of people right now doing telepathy on this planet is probably close to 20%, 25, somewhere between those two numbers, which is small. And we, in, in, I think a lot of people have experienced yeah. it at some point in their life. In the oh, everybody experiences telepathy all the time. It's yeah. just not the volume's not up on it. The, it's, it's, it's a natural human yeah. ability. Yeah, right. All right. Well, here's another question. This one's specifically for you, Marilyn. We always encourage questions from the chat. And this is. Yeah. So, you know, this is an interesting question because I get this a lot. And, you know, okay, um, read it, you experience read it this? so people can hear it, though. So the question, because some people don't get the visual. So I'm just going to. We have Roku people, they can't see us. They only hear us on the radio. Well, so I'm going to read the question just so other people know. The question is. Did you experience the silver cord that o OBE experiencers describe? So, yeah, I get that question a lot. And the interesting thing is that I've never experienced the silver cord. <laughs> so, wow. 
Yeah. Because <laughs> I never did either. And then finally I lost my mind. I'm like, I need to see it. And I did <laughs> twice. But it took great effort. And I wondered yeah. about that. A lot of people don't. Yeah. I was reading this in the book. Some do, some don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't even, honest to goodness, I didn't even know anybody could see it until Preston said that he went looking for it and he found it. Because no, uh, I don't. Yeah, so I've never, never seen, seen it. Seen it? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why that is. That's I don't think we need to. We just yeah. know. You know? All right. It's, yeah. I guess it's just an energetic thing. All right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> let's move to the next. Well, I'm not sure if this is a question or so much. A statement. I've started to get accidentally have OBEs before, and I get too startled to continue and just slam right back into my super hot body. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe yours is super hot, and that's the problem. <laughs> no, I was going to say, you know, this is real common, and um, people get startled. And the start part of the process of the discipline is that you work on. Um, tempering the startled response and the excited response that people have and the fear response mm -hmm. you know all these things actually cause you to slam right back in yep. and so there there is a process of where you actually discipline yourself to um, to deal with that startled response and you know come to wisdom's door can help you with that um, starting on that process of disciplining your startled response that's totally normal help happens to everybody yeah. part of the beginning process is everybody has to work through that and start tempering it yeah for most people i've talked to that it was fear They're like it's so scary i'm like no it's not that scary once you get doing it but right. i'm so excited yeah and just relax like you can't imagine right not two wheels and then when you finally get up on it and you're moving it's like wow you know yeah and then sometimes too you know like i would get like i would see one of my deceased friends and it'd be like oh my god you're here and <laughs> you know you get the super excited yeah. like, you're yeah. have you ever had a third, a third out of body experience or you do it with another person because dolly and i were able to do that oh times. i've done i have done it with some oh. people here and there, yeah. You yeah. can do oh, sure. that. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Nice. Have you, ever, have you ever been able to get have someone alive see you as an apparition? You know, Robert um, Monday did that. And I've never been able to do that. I, I go in front of people and I'm a ghost. They cannot see me. The only one who ever did was Dolly. Oh, well, in terms of as an apparition, that's a good question. But I've literally received hundreds of emails from people who have seen me in out-of-body experiences where i'm teaching them cool yeah. so people yeah. see me all the time I yeah. guess. <laughs> yeah. that's cool yeah all right well here's another question which is we've already kind of talked about can you do healing when you go out of body i've been taken to heal people which is kind of astonishing to me because i don't think of myself as a healer but they're like and i have been too work. it's not like something i do a lot of but i have done that and then i've seen you know there are a lot of um angels that do healing and stuff like that and um you'll see that there's a lot of that in these uh experiences there's a lot of that and there's a lot of um, spiritual teachers and spiritual guardians who come in and do healing on you and it's not just healing it's also vibrational raisings and things that are to help you in your spiritual progress yeah just going out of body is very healing mm -hmm. that's true you, know, yes. astral energies. you feel better when you come back yeah, absolutely. that's absolutely true yes mm -hmm. which, which makes me want to bring up something because there's a guy who wrote, wrote about his out-of-body experiences why why ram why ram is the author it's a pseudonym but he talked about coming back and being able to levitate and that happened to Robert Monroe twice. He fell down the stairs and floated down. And I ah. felt like there's times, you know, I should have tried because I was walking on air. <laughs> I wrote a book on levitation. I know you had an experience with that. And I'm wondering if you. Yeah, I want to know. Have, I did have one and it was years ago. And I had this experience where it was during the rites of passage initiations and the mysteries. I was taken to this uh, underwater temple. And then I literally levitated all around 
the upstairs of my home. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a one-time thing, you know, so oh, wow. it was, it was very exciting that one time. Um, <laughs> How old were you? Um, I must have been about 27 or 28 at the time. Okay. I'm 58 yeah. now, so it's a long time ago, yeah. <laughs> The older I get, the less it, I, I'm able to pull it off now, you know, okay. it's um, telekinetic and mm -hmm. um, now and then I'll wake up and I'm a little bit above the bed, but I slam right back down when I realize I'm doing it and it's, <laughs> you know, and uh, I don't know why I can't just go up anymore. And I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, here's another question from Maggie Smith and she's asking, can you give us an idea of the difference between realm and dimension? Oh, yeah, that's a good question, Maggie. You know, so like dimensions, you have like, let's say, let me give you an, a general idea. So third and fourth dimension are the border worlds. This is the mortal realms. So what this means, third and fourth dimension is where you have the battles between good and evil. Fifth dimensions and above are the realms of light. The first and second dimensions are the realms of darkness and right. evil. So yeah. the third and fourth dimension are these two dimensions. Re you know, the fifth dimension is a dimension. There are a million different realms within the third and fourth dimension. Yep. A million different realms, up, you know, in the fifth dimension and above. There's a million different realms in the first and second dimension. And so um, realms can consist of an infinite number. Dimensions can be more of, uh, uh, you know, a bigger sphere of existence. Right. Hopefully that's helpful. Right. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's been my experience because I've been to like different realms and I've traveled to the edge of it. I'm like, wow, this is, it's not like a, a world here, it's different. It's hard. Yeah. And what you're doing is all these realms are different vibrational levels within these spheres and within these dimensions. You know, there are all these different levels yeah. between, you know, so like, let's say you're in the third and fourth dimension. You've got these realms that are different levels of vibration. Yeah. I think Jesus said, I have, I go to make a, a I have, there are many houses and I go to make uh, houses for everybody. And I swear to you, I think that's what that is. It's, <laughs> it's even every one of those realms is a house. He described it as a house and it's almost like bubble memory in a computer. It's encapsulated. It's there and you can travel back and forth from them easily, but it's an actual place you can go to. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's funny. People always say, why don't you explore the earth in here? I'm like, well, no, the fun is on the higher realms. That's yeah. You'll yeah. learn that as soon as you go. It's like, you know, I don't, I'm not really that interested in Earth's exploring that. You can go there physically, but. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the higher spheres are the, the really interesting places to be. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, one more question. I have a question. <laughs> oh, I want you to hear you describe that. The Crystal River. I'm oh. serious. Yeah, the Crystal River was the Golden River in the Crist in the in the Crystal River floor the forest, which is the this was the forest and the trees were made of crystals and and everything was Crystal River flowing. <laughs> yeah, the river was golden. It was right. golden. The trees had these um, like uh, rose quartz leaves. The trees they were made of all sorts of you know amethysts and. You know, so it was just this beautiful crystal forest. Smell them. Every, yes. <laughs> yes. They're I've beautiful. Been there. I've seen it. Actually yeah. seen it. And Always I've never been back. And my <laughs> one deal is when I leave here, I'm going straight there. I'm going to sit down and have a root beer float and think about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I plan to do. That's my plan. I'm not, I press the noses. I've told them a million times. Come with me. I want to go there. It blew my mind when I saw it. I absolutely blew my mind. <laughs> it's just there's just so many things on the other side of everything that you yeah. just you're brought to them. Sometimes you're taught you're brought to learn something. You know, you go different places for different reasons, and that's the one that had me profoundly stupefied. So beautiful. There's just yeah. no words for a lot of stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there really aren't, and yeah, there really aren't. 
All right. Well, here's another question, which I find interesting because I've been to some of these lower realms and been attacked by negative entities. And usually I just run back to my body. But last time I, I, I held my ground and I put the light out and boy, they got, they turned into, oh, they were mad. <laughs> they were so mad. I'm like, okay, I'm leaving. I'm just getting them angry. So yeah. um, Allison is asking, can it be dangerous to go to the lower realms to help? Yes, it can. And, um, you know, this is why it's so important that you only go there if you are called to, because if you're called to, you'll be trained to do it. And um, even then you go through a lot of different processes in order to do it. You're like if you're going into a hell realm, you may actually go through exorcisms on your way back out, you know, because wow. you have to. You know, there's certain realms you go into that you can't come out without undergoing exorcisms because they're so contaminated. And so, yeah, and there are places where you're going to go into major spiritual warfare and you can you're going to undergo a uh, spiritual attack. And, you know, when it says in the, you know, in the Bible, there's a war between principalities and powers. They're not saying here. They're not saying that it's uh you know, it's, uh, you know, it's not a symbolic war. It's a real war, which means that you can lose and that, you know, you can, you know, you can get uh, some damage can be done. And so you shouldn't take these things lightly and you should only go when called. And that means you go because you're trained you know and then you still go with extreme, extreme uh, caution and with extreme, um, uh, you know, with a somber spirit and a humble spirit, knowing that this isn't a child's play. Um, and, you know, it's still, things can go wrong, you know. <laughs> and, um, well, I think we have time for one more question. Then I want to give you some time to talk a little bit about where people can find you. Although the links are in the description. Awesome. But thank here, you. But here is, oh, no, I, I just lost it. Oh, oh well. Um, okay. It was can some people not learn how to go, go out of body? Well, there are some people who probably shouldn't, and that would be people who have like, um, like for instance, people who have had to undergo exorcism <laughs> and, you know, people who have had problems with um, uh, demonic um, problems, um, who've had attachment to dark things in the past. There are people who, who shouldn't uh, do that. Um, there are people who can't learn or may not have the experience and it's okay. You know, there are some people who it may not come naturally to them and it's okay if it doesn't, because remember the purpose of the experience is the purification journey of the soul. And, you know, you can learn this purification journey of the soul through mystical theology texts and other, other means. We have all kinds of means that you can explore on the website. We have courses of study and all sorts of things you can explore. The, you know, out-of-body travel is a tool. It's not the truth itself. The tool does lead to the truth, but there are other ways that lead to the truth. So if for some reason you're a person where it doesn't happen for you, don't think that that doesn't mean that you cannot reach that truth in your lifetime it just means that there's another way for you there are other tools so remember out of body travel itself isn't the truth it's a tool you know and so there will be another way for you and you'll find that um the purification path and i would recommend that grand phases of the soul uh film is a really good journey. And, you know, even just, uh, you know, reading the mysteries of the redemption and learning about that journey is really helpful, that purification journey. Um, because that's the path that we're all here. You know, if we're incarnate here, we're here because of the purification journey of the soul. Um, I talk a lot about, um, in all of my work about the ancient sacred texts and the writings that were left behind by the great prophets, saints, mystics, and sages um, of all wow. world religions from around the world and how those were the last words they left behind before they, they, uh, they achieved the final liberation and that those are the great secrets that we're all here to right. find. Those are, those are 
there for us right. to, uh, to uh, find our way. Absolutely. Very cool. Know yeah. all that is knowable and then proceed. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So we still have three good minutes before we have to say goodbye to everyone tonight. So is there any last messages you want to give? And how can Definitely people find the website? Go to the website, outofbodytravel.org, also outofbodytravel.wordpress.com. And um, definitely you can always email me at Marilyn Hughes at outofbodytravel.com. And um, <laughs> well, yeah, look, look at all these books, guys. I mean, this is amazing. Check it out. I can't tell you, Marilyn, how much your books have helped me and brought me just joy and knowledge, which is the only thing we can take with us. <laughs> Money you can't take with you. It's just love and no, only love. That's it. Your experiences, you wear them, you employ them. Your experiences for the good of of all, and you take that with you. Love goes with you freely. You know. I really appreciate you saying that. It means a lot to me, Preston. Thank you. Hey, thank yeah. you. I mean, I really can't thank you enough because yeah. you have been a great resource for me, and I'm sure lots of other people. So Absolutely. it's been a true honor to have you on the show. I just can't thank you enough. I know the chat loved you, all the people here <laughs> listening tonight. So yep. I was so excited yep. when you said, yes, I'll come on the show. I'm like, yay, Dolly. Guess who's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was great. It's been great fun. It's been yeah. nice talking to both of you. It's been great. Yes, and I'm so grateful uh, to have met you. And um, I'm you as well. it's really important to me uh, uh, after reading through your books, like uh, Preston gave me the chance to do before I got to meet you. Um, thank you so very much. Um, oh, thank we love you. Come back again. This isn't over, okay? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Absolutely. All right. Well, yeah. This is the light gate, everybody. We love you. Have a wonderful week. Uh, there, or uh, just do do good, love. You're, we came to you live from New Orleans at uh, the United Public Radio Network at 107.7 FM and the UFO Paranormal Radio Network at 105.3. And all I can say is love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bye. Bye, Marilyn.